I got a little uh, free time today. I wasn't expecting while it's still uh, daylight out. So anyway, I'm going to start to pull her apart here. Got the recoil starter off. She's, she's, she sees, she doesn't want to move. So I've undone the head bolts here and voila, some nastiness and two open valves. That's, that's looking like more than just valve overlap there. But, so obviously some, some water has gotten in probably through the exhaust and uh, the cylinder's not looking too bad, but the, the valves are looking kind of nasty there. So apparently I'm, I'm in for some major work on this thing. Sure, the, the carburetor there uh, having the gas cap missing. This thing almost looks like it was like taken and I don't know, stored in the woods maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But it, it does look like it, you know, some major oil leak in there over time, but so it's basically all over the base. So, yeah, I had to pull the axle right out there to, uh, to get the bottom uh, recoil starter bolt off. Yeah, I could have done it with a wrench, but it's, it's much nicer with my uh, impact there. I've started using it the last number of years. So there's a bunch of pine needles there in the, the governor. So, so I'm in for a significant tear down here. So the next thing I'll be doing is figuring out, um, probably got to pull basically the, the blower chopper assembly off it there to, uh, to get... Uh, get that off of the crankshaft to be able to remove the motor I see when you're looking in here you know you can see she's she's a little bit rusty there it could be seized up I don't know but I'll know these things inside and out by the time I'm done I obviously kind of wonder how they work but so we'll be getting into it I, I uh, downloaded a uh, owner's manual for it from from uh, the internet there and it shows you, you know, most of the major pieces and that. Fortunately, it almost looks like Sears Roebuck's uh, gonna go under one of these days, so parts might not be available for this thing. It's a 1990 Craftsman chipper shredder five horse there, but worst come to worst, I'll have to build my own parts for it. It's not always impossible to do, but anyway, so I will continue tearing the motor down here I just want to get it off here before it, it may even snow tomorrow it's hard to say it's, uh, it's like 24 degrees out right now and there's a bit of a wind blowing so she's kind of a little bit chilly right here so there must be a blade on here that, that chips the wood I just can't see it due to the seized up nature of it and where its location is on there but I'll be sure to take video of uh, how this thing actually works because I'm curious uh, also and I take some of these videos to help me put things back together too because uh, you know it'll be a number of months before I get it back together probably so it it helps you to review the videos to uh, know, you know how things how things went so anyway we'll continue on there so well there finally got the case apart Here's the other half here so Big block of ice there that could stop things from rotating so I'll investigate this how this works here these fingers look like they fling out or something I don't know it's interesting that the watermarks on that side it must have sat that way and then it got spun over and that scrap yard it was sitting on a side like this I got a bunch of crud in there I got to clean out Got to take that bolt out before I can remove the motor off it. For a while there, I thought it was tearing apart a Rolls Royce Merlin supercharger case or something. We only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Got about 20 bolts around the outside of this thing here that I had to take off. So, Merlin supercharger, they said it was like zippered together with bolts. Probably got 200 bolts on it or something. Anyway, so the motor's sitting down there. Just to give you orientation of what I'm doing here. So this is the, the chipper section here, but the, uh, yeah, it actually, it, it chips the wood on the far side there, comes through, so, oh, this might be the blade right there, these two blades, 
yeah and then this one here is for like uh, chewing up your leaves and smaller stuff so this stuff must propel it out anyway we'll figure out how this thing works here at some point in time do enough tear down we'll, we'll get her apart yet well sometimes you get lucky broke that big lump of ice loose on this side and this thing started to rotate and the motor the piston started to go up and down with it so things are things are looking up you see these little fingers do flick out here flick out from the RPMs that one there still sees from being underwater but and this is a little little blade here like a 8 inch lawnmower blade gotta be for chopping up yeah it's yeah. sharp on the one side but anyway at least the motor's not seized so I'm gonna try taking this central bolt off here and see what that accomplishes so yeah these these blades here on the back side there, they're what does the main chipping. Big stuff. Well, I lucked out on the uh, cutter impeller there, whatever you want to call it. Looks like it's got about a quarter inch key in it here. So I just grabbed, uh, here's the back side of it anyway. So it's just a central bolt once I took that, that out and the little lawnmower type blade there. I just, uh, grab these fingers on opposite sides here and start yanking it and it just slid right off the shaft gotta admit I did spray a little release all down the hole first but I don't know if that really helped although it does look wet but uh, yeah she just slides right off the shaft so so there's your wood chipping blades two of them there that's what uh, chips the wood there Get some balance holes in it yeah, so then these four bolts here come off and, and takes this plate off the motor and then I can uh, unbolt it from the base. I got one uh, one bolt here that's, well, I don't know, I guess it's technically stripped because the nut rotates but it doesn't come, doesn't come up off the threads and this side doesn't rotate either so I'll be in for putting a new bolt in there, welding it in. But... So far, not too bad. I'll just make sure I keep that key down there and get those out. I wanna wanna get the motor off. Now that she's unseized, it's uh, it's better, of course. But um, get in the house and uh, drain the oil out. I was worried that uh, crankcase was full of oil or water. I mean, it could have oil too, but the crank's full of water. It can uh, seize the motor up like that too. So. But now she turns over, turns over good. Now I just got to deal with the two seized valves. But I've done that type of thing before, penetrating oil and some time and all that. Just gotta go slow on a project like this. Take your time. You get too big a hurry, that's when you start breaking stuff. So I've been known to do that a time or two too. But I have learned that penetrating oil and letting letting her sit for a day or two or a week or two or six months or <laughs> it can. Uh, help you out in the long run so anyway time to get that motor off of there before before dark hits gotta pull my glove off here to hit the get the camera to stop recording it's too cold out here I'm freezing my feet as it is